Hello, my name is Michael Andreri. I'm a founder of Sundrum Solar. Uh, Sundrum Solar is the leader in hybrid solar systems in the world today. I'm here to share with you some of the developments that we've made recently in solar system that's able to provide energy uh, 24 hours a day, even in low light and no light conditions. Sundrum Solar's mission has been to dramatically improve solar economics with cost-effective hybrid assemblies and systems. One of the struggles that solar systems have is their operation only occurs when the sun's out. Okay? They really haven't tapped into that laden energy that the sun stores in the atmosphere. Um, and the problem that creates is you put an investment on the roof that is only giving you return for four or five or six hours a day. If you're able to expand that to uh, 24 hours a day, you dramatically improve the amount of energy that you can supply the customer and thus the savings. So we look at using efficiency, time, and time to maximize the amount of energy that can be delivered per square foot and we are the leader in that market. Uh, and a side note, every picture that you see here is of an actual Sundrum Solar installation that has occurred somewhere in the world. Sundrum Solar Advantages. So if you look at a bare PV panel, it's actually very good at converting the sun's energy. It converts close to 95, 90% of the sun's energy. In this example, there's a PV panel that's putting out about 195 watts of electrical power. It's actually losing a lot of the energy that is created in the form of heat back to the atmosphere. By placing our device underneath a commercially available PV panel, we're able to extract that heat, change it to the thermal transfer fluid that we're passing through our collector, gain about 435 watts of thermal power, and in doing that we've cooled the PV panel where you get additional electricity. So you're getting a total of 645 watts where before you gained 195. Basically when you have the thermal load and you apply a Sundrum Solar Collector you get an increase in your electrical power. You get a significant amount of thermal power that you can use netting about 3x power improvement over if you just use the bare PV panel. Picture says a thousand words. Um, PV panel right on the left is a Sundrum Solar module and you can see that the cooling directly affects the silicon cell. Basically the bucket behind is about 70 degrees and we're keeping the front surface of the silicon junction to about an 80 degree temperature. A significant improvement over the bare PV panel on the right which is up around 130 degrees. Uh, microinverters are fantastic. This is an actual installation that's on a roof with six sundrum cooled panels right next to six panels uh, that are bare and you can see that we're providing a 4.4 percent improvement in total power output of the sun cool panels. We've been doing residential installations since 2008 and you can see we have markets all across the country from Hawaii all the way to Vermont. We've been doing commercial installations since 2011 um, with some very premier customers that are listed here. All of these customers are very happy and satisfied with the systems that we provide. Last year, we established the world record in solar efficiency. Uh, this is a two family home in Somerville, Mass, where in addition to heating potable water, we're also providing space heating. And in May of 2013, in the peak hour, that peak hour was from uh, 2 to 3 o'clock in the afternoon, we collected 86 percent, actually, we collected close to 91 percent of the sun's energy on the roof. We lost about 4 percent of it in thermal losses on the way down for a net thermal delivery of 71 percent consumed by the house. And of the 16 percent electricity that was captured up on the roof, we lost about a percent in the inverter for 15% to be consumed by the house. So the 86% isn't what was collected on the roof, it was actually what was delivered to the home. And on the right, you can see both a daily swipe 
of the energy that was delivered uh, during the day and also a uh, comparative pie chart as to what a bare PV panel. Now when we looked at this, you know, we were all excited. You know, we established a world record that no one else has attained. But we also looked at it and says, so how long can we do that? So that, that's a peak hour, an hour's great, all right? There's 24 hours in a day, you know? And, and then there are other conditions where if the sun wasn't out, we would be nowhere near that. How can we improve that? And you can see the amount of time, which this day I think was about six hours, uh, that we were able to run and then we shut off. How can we solve that to improve the amount of energy that's being delivered to the home? So what we did is we went and looked at what is the profile of energy that we're collecting. And the Sundrum Solar Collector, predominantly because the PV panel manufacturers don't want us to heat the panel, we basically directly interact with the atmosphere. Uh, therefore, in stagnation, we do not exceed temperatures greater than a bare PV panel. And that's the reason why I think we're up to close to 20 different uh, commercially available PV panel manufacturers allow us to attach because we're not going to negatively affect it by overheating their panel. But that also means that we have to operate relatively close to ambient. That also means we directly interact with the ambient and we can collect energy that is in the latent air. What I mean by that or what I mean by passive solar energy is if there was no energy in the air, then that air would be minus 477 degrees Fahrenheit and we'd all be dead. Um, the energy that's in the air is there by the sun, you know, and relative to absolute zero, it is a tremendous amount of energy. And the relative change from 30 degrees to 50 degrees in that total percent of air energy is minor. The overall issue is at 30 degrees, how usable is that 30 degrees? Now in this chart, what you'll see is, you know, we're kind of highlighting the comfort zones. The red uh, lines are for each individual day, what is the ambient temperature, the outside air? Uh, how did that swing? And then what was the collector temperature? How did that swing? And you'll see that, you know, during the day we get a lot hotter than the ambient temperature conditions. Uh, this is a loaded system. so. It's operating, fluids passing through it, and stagnation would actually be hotter than here. But at night, we get colder. So we not only benefit from uh, the active solar radiation heating up, us up during the day with direct sunlight, but at night, we can dissipate that energy as easily. Right? Or a level of the capability that really will be a conversation for a future video is because we're facing space, we have spatial radiation, and we actually get colder than the outside air. So we get colder than the ambient temperature, and we're currently working on solutions where that will help us to provide air conditioning solutions to our customers in the future. This video is really gonna more focus on the thermal aspects. We'll talk a little bit, but really a future video will share, or release will share the air conditioning applications that we're currently having developed. So with the aspect of knowing that we can collect both active solar radiation, direct solar radiation from the sun, which we've been doing since 2008, and the realization that we are very good at collecting passive, the latent energy that's in the atmosphere, with Capital Sun Group and Net Zero Meter and a very um, knowledgeable customer uh, who is very willing to uh, support a high degree of monitoring uh, we installed a 71 kilowatt hybrid array, uh, 45 kW of that is thermal, 26 kW of it's electric. It's tied with a six ton water to water heat pump. And a heat pump thermally is exactly what a transformer is electrically. An electrical transformer takes energy coming in and it will step up that energy and voltage or step down that energy and voltage. What a heat pump does is takes energy come in and it will step up the temperature of that energy or step down the temperature of that energy. So all of a sudden, if I'm gathering 40 degrees or 50 or 30 degrees off a roof, there is a way with a little bit of electricity to step that up to 80, 90, 100, 120 in terms of uh, temperatures that can be more usable for that customer. This system was the first system we ever did 
that was designed to provide space heating and space cooling. Really, domestic hot water in this system is somewhat of an afterthought. There's a little bit of it. There's two people in this house. It's an 8,000 square foot home, and the space heating and space cooling load just dominates. And, you know, our expectation is we're going to be able to take this home to zero energy. First time an 8,000 square foot home actively being used could be taken to zero energy. Again, that's a future topic. The system that was implemented here is a dual heat pump system. Basically, there's um, the solar collectors that are on the roof uh, that, have, that are underneath the PV modules. There are more PV panels up there than there are um, hybrid modules. The energy from the roof, uh, let's say it was coming down at 50 degrees, we would feed it into the heat pump. The heat pump would boost it up to 110 uh, degrees or whatever relative that's in the storage tank. And we would heat up that storage tank. And then in the, when a zone in the house was requesting, the heat pump on the load side would extract that thermal energy and deliver it to the individual zone of the house. This home has five zones. Uh, in the summer, this will operate in reverse where it will extract the thermal energy from the room in the air, deposit it in the tank, and then in the evening, we will dissipate that energy to the sky, just like a cooling tower, except at much lower energy and water cost than a cooling tower operates. So how the system work? So this slide is a snapshot of performance on the 15th of January. Uh, we had a very cold winter this year. And at the period of time at Snapshot, which is right around noon, though it was a poor sunlight day, only about 500 watts per meter square, we operated at a COP of 5.3. For the day, including nighttime operation, we operated at a COP of 3.3. What we did is we compared this system performance with a larger system that we have that is a more traditional. In Norwalk, Connecticut, it has 96 collectors. That 96 collector system for that day delivered 23 and a half kilowatt hours of energy to the hot water system. The Harvest HP system with 76, so fewer collectors, delivered 125.6 kilowatt hours for the day, four times more increase in energy. And if I normalized out for the exact number of collectors, five times, 5x increase in energy. In the period of time when solar systems have, solar thermal systems have their most difficult cold, partly cloudy conditions. To highlight the capability of the system, um, the evening before we took a snapshot on the 14th of January at night. And at night, we were, at this point, we were running out of COP of 3.5. Uh, we were basically pulling water down off the roof at 35.6 uh, degrees setting it back up at 28 and basically the heat pump was heating that water was translating transforming that energy to 107 degree water with a return of 95 degrees on february 22nd we had improved our um, data collection capability and we're able to start to get put together uh, rolling shots of actual performance, real-time data. And this customer has a natural gas backup. So we disabled the Harvest HP system for the morning and the green spikes that you see is actually the natural gas boiler turning on, uh, heating up that tank to be later delivered into the house. The red uh, line that you see is the load of the house the different zones of the house actually requesting thermal energy and it being delivered to that zone. The yellow line is the available sunlight. Uh, the blue line is, or the blue swipe is the amount of electrical energy coming off the PV panels. The orange line that you see after the Harvest HP was enabled is the amount of thermal energy coming off the roof. Okay. And underneath the red line, kind of hard to see, there's a purple line that's the amount of electricity that's going into the heat pump. The amount, of the amount of thermal energy coming out the heat pump is actually that purple line plus the orange line 
minus some efficiency losses, which really are relatively small compared. And the thing that I, delighted me with this chart is not only the, the COPs that we were delivering in February, which you know at two o'clock is probably in the six range, but at six o'clock at night, when the PV system has stopped operating, we're delivering a COP of uh, pretty close to four, three and a half. And the ability of a system to be able to continue to collect the solar energy that's been stored in the atmosphere does great things to solve uh, some of the main problems solar thermal systems have. You know, you've got to put in enough storage to actually hold enough water that's going to be consumed for the entire day of the facility, which sometimes can be very difficult to do, if not impossible. Um, the fact that on cloudy days or rainy days, you're not able to collect anything and be completely reliant upon an auxiliary system. That problem's also solved. How the system uh, runs in real life is on demand. It's much more like a boiler than a dependent solar system. It's now an on-demand solar system. And Sundrum Solar is happy to present to you the availability for you to start implementing on-demand solar systems. On this graph, you can see that it's only periodically that the thermal portion uh, is pulling energy off the roof. Uh, that's because the when we heat up the storage tank to 95 degrees, uh, we basically satisfy the amount of storage we want to keep in that storage tank, and our controls tell us to shut off. Then when uh, that energy is extracted out of the storage tank and the, it's at the set point where it requests us to put energy back in, we turn back on. This way here, we're only collecting and delivering energy when there is a need. It's no longer a conversation of use it or lose it. When you want it, you get it. When you don't need it, you get the electricity fully for use by the facility. And again, even at 6.30 at night, 7, when the sun's gone, if there's a demand, we're still supplying. At 3 a.m. in the morning, where there's definitely no sunlight, we're still supplying. There are more ways to use this capability than just a system that's designed for space heating and space cooling. There's a tremendous amount of domestic hot water requirements. When I think about hotels, laundries, many applications have a huge load uh, that they have for heating. This is now a system that can meet that load with um, lower storage requirements and higher energy out than any other system available in the market. Um, the Dem Harvest HP domestic hot water system is just showing one application that we can use um, for domestic hot water only. Slide 18 is this is a way where, you know, a Harvest HP system is able to provide heating or positive thermal energy 24 hours. It's really only able to supply cooling when the amount of um, active solar radiation dies down to where uh, we can operate with successful COPs for cooling. Again, much more conversation for a future video. We do have the controls where we can design or program really when the Harvest HP will kick in and what the minimum COP or coefficient of performance would be to provide the best financial return to the business. Sundrum Solar Harvest HP advantages is that we're on demand. By accessing both the active solar energy when there's sunlight and the passive solar energy or related solar energy that it has stored in the air around us to be a 24 by 7 solution, we have really created an evolutionary step for solar technology. The amount of energy that we're now able to deliver is significantly higher than any other solar solution that's available. On the we can run in dual mode. We can gather thermal energy really 24 by 7, but in low light or nighttime conditions, we can also cool. We can provide air conditioning. And we're generating all the energy requirements 
or a hybrid solution that both generates the electricity, gathers the thermal energy needed to run through our heat pump with extra energy being supplied. It can be designed to meet the entire energy requirements of the individual customer. Really what we've introduced here is a total energy solution delivered by Sunhomes. So our mission of improving solar economics with cost-effective hybrid assemblies really doesn't end here. You know, with this evolution or evolutionary step in our industry, it's created a world of opportunities where we can go from. It's really surprising. But we are using that to both use efficiency, the amount of solar energy that can be collected in a square foot, and the amount of time you can access that energy during the day to maximize the energy per square foot that we're delivering to our customers. So I want to thank you for your time. If you wish to contact us for further information, you can contact us by email at sales at sundromsolar.com or through the web at www.sundromsolar.com. I look forward to future conversations and the future innovations that we're able to bring to the market.